fact, most of them believed the Earth was flat. Then one day, a map maker named Christopher Columbus had an idea. Do you know what? I think the world isn't flat at all. I think it's round like a ball. Did you hear what he said? Did you hear what he said? He said that the world is round. Oh, he's crazy. He's crazy. I think the world isn't hmm. flat at all. This is how I like my history. It's, uh, actually, they didn't all believe that. Many of them did know the, the, the world was round. It wasn't flat. But I don't want to digress. It's Columbus Day in the USA, at least where it's still allowed. Colonialism, oppression, white men, the conquest of paradise day. Really? I bet John Robson disagrees. He joins us now from Ottawa. Uh, white man, oppression, colonial, yucky yuck day, John? That would be too simple a story, and I understand that the story was often too simple as told the other way. And I'm going to stop on that world round thing. Yes, everybody who was anybody in the Middle Ages knew perfectly well the world was round. John Holywood's best-selling astronomy popularizer gave three separate proofs of the fact that the world was round. And I'd like to see all the people who despise the Middle Ages now come up with even one on their own other than, well, it was on the Internet. But the thing about the voyages of Columbus and other Europeans to the New World is that they did cause the greatest demographic catastrophe in the history of the human race. And there's no way of ignoring that. European diseases, to which there was no immunity in the New World, killed between 90 and 95 percent of the inhabitants, we now think. And I tell when I teach this to my students, I tell them, there isn't a person in this room, if they had a button they could press that would stop it, you wouldn't press that button. Even though, and this is the other part of the story that must never be forgotten, the European settlement of the New World has produced the freest and wealthiest societies the world has ever seen, and a vital, absolutely indispensable contribution to the global struggle against tyranny. The founding of the United States, if you leave aside the fate of the Aboriginal people in the Americas, was a blessing for mankind. And yes, there was slavery. There were all these other parts of the story <laughs> yeah, that those, you those have to remember. Things, yeah. But the problem with the United States, from the point of view of the slaves, was not that the promise of American life was false. It is that they were wrongly excluded for three centuries. But having said all of that, you cannot be blind to the disaster. The diseases wiped out entire peoples, it emptied villages, it destroyed cultures. For instance, Tocqueville talks about this, the great mounds that were found in the southeastern United States. Is mm. When you ask the local aboriginals, what, who built these? Why were they built? They have no idea. Because Spanish explorers wandered through there, shaking hands with people, saying, have you heard about the Christian God? And without meaning to, because it was not a plot, they left behind germs that wiped out everything. There was no literacy in that, those cultures. There's no record. We, we can guess they were probably religious in motivation, because most early big architecture is. That's just based on our shared humanity. We have no idea. And this was devastating. But then you get this swing the other way. I mean, these people who want to get rid of Columbus Day, and there was a classic statement, this uh, Aboriginal leader in Washington State who said, nobody discovered Seattle. I said, you know, there weren't people, and then there were people. Now, well, John, well, actually, uh, oddly enough, I think we have that particular clip because she is so compelling and lyrical in, in, in her, her defense of her position. Let's see that now, please. It internalizes genocide in our children and it makes them ashamed to be who they are. I personally felt it myself growing up and um, it's just time to change it so that they can be proud of themselves and not honor a man that murdered their family. Well, it's, it's a profoundly reductive and, and quite moronic statement, but let's, let's talk about a wider context here. Now, we're speaking of ages past when all sorts of people died who would not have perished today. We think about plagues in Europe, a third of Europe are dying. It seems so simple to, to cure that today. We think about those societies that were colonized. And let's go, go beyond the Americas. India, for example, the British left in India, a, a democracy of more than a billion people, a country that is enormously pluralistic and multicultural, that by and large does work. It wasn't all paradise before. In New Zealand, for example, there are entire species of animals that have disappeared because they were hunted to extinction by the Maori. There was ethnic clean, cleansing, not intentionally, but by effect, ethnic cleansing throughout the Americas where tribe uh, conquered other tribes. I mean, people act badly towards yeah. one another. There was slavery. The Europeans did enslave people often. There, there, was were, there were no infected blankets on purpose. That, that's a myth. So, I mean, it, it, it's surely the issue of what is inevitable. People, the British saw Ireland a few miles away across the water, so they tried to conquer Ireland. It's what man does. 
Yeah, and there was cannibalism when there was torture, not just of prisoners of war, but of women and children. The notion that Aboriginals lived in Eden, again, it, it's weird because in, in one sense it cheapens what these people really were like. Their, their heroism, their struggle against the internal failings of humans as well as the relentlessness of nature. The point I was going to make about Seattle is somebody did discover it, and they only discovered it because they managed to cross the Bering Strait. These yeah. guys were tough as iron, but there weren't people there, and then there were, and they were people like ourselves. The technology in the Americas is different because the land, the plants, all the stuff you want, guns, germs, and steel by Jared Diamond goes into it in great detail. But they were not different from us. And the, the inverse of the story of, you know, great European enlightened people come and wallop savages is hideous European white snakes come and destroy Garden of Eden. It wasn't that way either. And she, you know, she says Columbus murdered her people. No, Columbus shook hands with her people and gave them diseases he did not mean to. He did some atrocious things. He was not a great man. But nobody, no human being is innocent. And that is where the story just flips around and becomes equally idiotic. And sometimes people who've been raised with this, oh, here are the traditions of my ancestors, they get very upset about this and say, but I was told that my people were this and that. But, you know, they were human beings. It's the only race any of us belong to. And if the Aboriginals had sailed to England, they would not have shown up and said, ah, what splendid cultures you all have, we'll get back in the boat. So the idea that they somehow had this vastly superior way of being in harmony with nature, pacifist, feminist, all the stuff that people have from time to time <laughs> written, it's nonsense. And it's not a knock on aboriginals when I say that, it's a knock on human beings. Mea culpa, I'm one too. Mm. There are, I mean, it's a complex issue, certainly when you read some of the, the documentation of, of, of the Spanish conquest, the perception of who had a soul and who didn't is extremely jarring today. But there were different European countries conquering different places. Sometimes it was relatively enlightened. I mean, I don't think we can conclude from this that, that it was the right thing to do. But as I said earlier, it was the inevitable thing to do. It's what peoples did at a particular period in their history. And so if we read of the, of the Jesuits in Ontario and the way they studied the, 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 the native languages and did not try to impose anything, just try to share and listen, and how they were treated later. I mean, they were cannibalized. They, they, they were tortured to death. This cannot be overlooked. Yeah, and again, you talk about the Spanish. What, did, what was the Aztec view of who had a soul? Yep, true, and who true. should be hauled up a pyramid, have their chest slashed open, and their still beating heart ripped out and offered to the gods while their bloody carcass was flung down the steps. These people were not angels either. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's interesting, you talk about inevitability. It only hit me very recently because I was doing a, a piece on Vikings and on Leif Erikson Day, and I realized had the contact between Europe and the Americas proceeded through successful Viking settlements in Newfoundland, much more time to get used to each other's culture and for the inhabitants of the Americas to develop immunity to European diseases, the dreadful part of the story might not have been told. But to emphasize the horror, and again, the duplicity, the smallpox blankets, the broken treaties, this is only a small part of it. It's the yeah. diseases, and that was nobody's fault. Nobody planned it, exactly. and nobody could have stopped it. John, we're it doesn't change the fact that the free societies are a blessing to mankind. Well, they are. I mean, although I would disagree with you about your, your, your uh, perception of America, I don't think uh, that was... I, I think that was actually an obstruction to the Enlightenment, not a part of, the, of its progress. However, that's for another show. But you're terribly judgmental because you're a European, so what would you know? <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. I appreciate it. Thank you.